denken net weer aan Danny Bula, denk uh, speciaal, en um, Danny Jacobs ook, en um, ek denk ons, dit is ook niet goed om die mensen in die oorlog te teisteren, um, daar bij Rusland en Ukraine net te denk aan al bij lande, um, mens hoor nou stories wat niet baie mooi is wat uitkom nie, um, ek denk vooral aan jou kinderkies um, en jou mensies, en dan ook vir ons eigen gemeente ook speciaal opdra. Dankie. Is er nog gewetsversoeke? Voor al ons jong mens wat afgedwaal het, wat bezig is om terug te kom, wat die heilige gees inwerk, dat hulle kan terugkom. Dat is al so wit. Enige ander versoeke? Is daar enige stil gebedsversoeke? Dankbare harte? Ok. Kom ons maak ons oor toe en dan bid ons saam. Our Lord Father, blessed be your name forever. We gather here today in your presence to worship and draw nearer to you. Let our praise and worship come unto you as a sweet mebele be thee. Our provider, we put our trust in you, and we commit all our plans into your hands. Let everything we do serve to glorify your name. We ask that you be with those who are unable to be here today, that the message and love, may, that your message and love may still reach them. Be, those, be with those who are feeling lonely today, uh, alone today, that they may also know that they are never truly alone, and that you are always with them. Help, please help those with silent requests to receive your blessings and guidance in their time of need. We also ask that you be with the Van Grenen family after their attempted theft. We also ask that you be with Tani Bueller, Tani Jacobs, Tani Helen, uh, that you may be with them in their, with, with their health. We also want to say um, be with uh, um, Dennis um, after his operation in his arm that he may heal and grow from strength to strength. We also ask that you be with Sunay's family after the loss of their child. Lord, we also ask you to be with those people there in the Ukraine that are suffering from the war, both on the, well, not just those in the Ukraine, those on the Russian side as well, those that don't want to be in that war. Lord, we ask that you find that it comes to a peaceful resolution so that all parties may return once more to a happy uh, lives. We ask that you be with everyone here in the church. You know their needs, you know their wants, you know their the, the thankful hearts, and that you, that you be with them. We also ask that you be with our youth that have, that have strayed, and that you bring them back to us, so that they may once again join in your family. Please, Lord, give us the strength to face the week in, ahead with whatever challenges it may bring. We bring all this up to you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Ons sal nou na die sendingsverhaal luister. John was a bright young student in Malawi. As a teenager, he was handpicked by local leaders of his faith tradition to study at a school in Zanzibar, Tanzania. The goal was for him to learn how to go into unentered areas and create new followers. During his time there, he learned a lot about his own religion. And the next step was for him to also learn about Christianity, since he would be interacting with Christians regularly. After three years, they said, you go back home and you research the King James Vision, this one. You go there for that one, special for the King James Vision. Why King James Vision? Because they do believe that the King James Vision have got a good explanation than the other vision. John enrolled at an Adventist school and joined a youth group. He attended all the classes and engaged with pastors in discussions about Adventist beliefs. All the while, he was sending reports back to the religious leaders in Zanzibar. Eventually, after three years studying at Rwaz Mission, the Seventh Adventist Mission, this is where now I come to say, ah, I do understand the Bible. John felt convicted to give his life to God and was baptized at a camp meeting. 
After his baptism, he stopped sending reports to Zanzibar. John's father was furious. My father, to him, it was an ambition that I'm going to, I, 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 I was to go to Zanzibar, and when I come back from there, they respect me. So to him, it was a privilege that, oh, my, 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 my son now has gone higher. So when he heard that he, I, I have converted into Christianity, and now I have been baptized into Seventh-day Adventist, to him, it was, came like a blow. But despite rejection from his family, John continued to pursue ministry. Eventually, he was chosen to be a global mission pioneer. So they picked me to put him into global mission pioneer. Can you see now? To go into and enter the areas. So can see, the first mission wanted me to go and enter the areas. They, they, they had the same idea, but just intended to go to Seventh Adventist and be a global mission of pioneer. He ministered for 10 years as a pioneer, following Christ's method and sharing his testimony with people he met. John hadn't finished his education yet, so he enrolled at Malawi Adventist University. I wanted to pursue my degree. I graduated in 2018, 2018. So I appreciate God. I thank God because I'm now a graduate, and now I know many things than before. From his teenage years to his time at the university, John knows firsthand the difference Adventist mission schools make in people's lives. This quarter, a portion of the 13th Sabbath offering will go to help build a community outreach and leadership development center on the campus of Malawi Adventist University. Please pray for those involved as the project develops. Pray that more students like John will come to know Jesus through Adventist education. Thank you for supporting mission through 13 Sabbath offering projects like this. Deacons uh, will now come to collect your offering and tithe. Hi. We would like to wish, uh, the, we'll do the birthdays and um, anniversaries. Uh, this week was there were no anniversaries. However, there was one birthday. And we'd like to wish Rudy Mouton a happy birthday for the 5th of April. Please bow our heads in prayer. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that we can always trust in you. You are an abundant God, and out of your great mercy, you have given us so much. We give this offering and tithe to you today. With it, we worship that you care and, and we worship you and give our whole selves to you. Please now take this and use it in your king, for your kingdom and glory. Extend it and multiply it so that it may reach many. We pray all this in your powerful name, Jesus. Amen.
Although this is an Afrikaans congregation, I hope that it will be okay if I speak uh, my first language, uh, just so I can better express myself. Uh, I feel as nervous as when I was up here and it was uh, doing testimonies for our baptismal in November last year. Uh, so if you see my paper shaking, uh, try to overlook that. Um, but I did say that I would take every opportunity that the Lord gave me, so when they asked us to do this, how could I say no? Uh, so recently I was contemplating the power of positive affirmations, how we are what we feed our minds. There are numerous studies on the impact of repeating positive expressions to yourself. It's the whole mind over matter argument. Repeating positive messages really can help to overcome negative thoughts about oneself. While positive affirmations are no doubt powerful, they are still based on our own frail human strength. That got me thinking about how unlike us, God is unfaltering and unchanging. He will not fail, disappoint, or mislead. And by extension, as biblical affirmations are not based on us, but rather on God's infallible word, they must hold the same unchanging strength. I turned to the word of God to discover some bi biblical affirmations that could be repeated to strengthen the mind, my faith, and my reliance and resilience when facing trials. In a matter of a few short exploratory reads, I came to conclusion that there are thousands of biblical affirmations that we could use to our benefit, and that it would likely take me a lifetime to repeat them just once. I thought today I would share a few biblical affirmations that maybe you can take with you that will resonate and that you'll be able to carry with you into the week ahead. Oh, there we go. Sometimes I face challenges that are too great to bear. I feel as though the trials I am facing are going to overwhelm me. It is then that I need to remind myself that God comforts me in all my tribulations. When the world tells me I am not enough, that I need to be more, do more, have more, I can stop. And I tell myself that I am sufficient in God. When it feels like no one hears me, no one understands what I am trying to say, or maybe that they don't hear what I'm not saying, I can take comfort that my voice is heard by God, and he is always ready to listen. When life isn't fun, when I find it difficult to find happiness in a broken world filled with so much negativity and ugliness, I find solace that my soul finds joy in God. And the best place to find happiness is in rejoicing in Him. I can take strength from the Lord as God is always present in my life. I thank Him for the times He has carried me through. And there have been many times. Even when I feel lost, when the path ahead is unclear and I don't know what to do, God will guide me forever. He is the shining light, a guide on my footpath, calling me home to him. When I feel broken, like I am missing something, like there is something wrong with me, I tell myself not to despair, for I am complete in God. My incompleteness comes from sin, but the Lord will make me whole again. And it is inevitable, I will mess up. My steps will falter and I will sin. But instead of beating myself down, instead of wallowing in my guilt and inflicting further harm, I should be reassured that I can re repent and be restored. Jesus died for me. I am forgiven. And I should also pray to Jesus that I will do better the next time. On days when I'm exhausted mentally, physically, emotionally, I rejoice that I find rest in God and that God in all his wisdom blessed and sanctified the Sabbath so that we can have a day of rest in him. He knew that we would need this rest and that we would need him. I am loved because God is is love. And even when this world holds no place for my beliefs, 
for my convictions, for my faith, even when I am rejected by society, I take comfort in belonging to God. It also reassures me that I do not have to carry my mistakes with me, the shame of my failures, that I can start from here. I am not too far gone. I am not unsavable, as my past does not define me. And I can become anew through Christ. When I find myself feeling isolated and alone, when it seems as though the world is against me and I have no one to turn to, I am reminded that God won't abandon me, and I should turn to him. God answers my prayers. I humble myself at his feet, and I believe it. I know that God answers it, even if it's only in his time and in, in the way that he deems best. I know they will be answered. Whether my heart is broken, whether my mind faces challenges, or my spirit needs strengthening, whether my immune system is down or my body is stricken, God is my healer. When deadlines are looming and my workload is weighing down, when the pressures of family, friends, studies, career, commitments, and every other thing leaves me feeling overwhelmed, God comforts my anxiety and quiets my mind. I can rest assured that God has great plans for me. He has led me safe thus far, and as we know, he will lead us home. This is one that I say to myself every day. I am blessed. For I am the child of a king, the one and only God, and I am in awe of my father. I am always on God's mind. Isn't that amazing uh, to suppose that God thinks about me, a small speck on this planet? While the world grows ever more materialistic, I can rejoice that I am worth more than any materialistic thing. I don't need a lot, for with God, I have everything I need to flourish. No matter how insurmountable the obstacles may appear, I can overcome everything with Christ. When I am confronted with all my glaring imperfections, I remind myself that I am remarkably made. I am not an accident of evolution, but a carefully designed creation. And last but not least, even though I'm faced with setbacks, I can reconcile that God wants me to succeed. Isn't that incredible? that biblical affirmations that were applicable thousands of years ago are just as true today. God's divine world, infallible. It's simply incredible. As mentioned, there is power in repeating affirmations. So I want to repeat these biblical affirmations so that they might take root. God comforts me in all my tribulations. I am sufficient in God. My voice is heard by God. My soul finds joy in God. God is always present in my life. God will guide me forever. I am forgiven. I am complete in God. I find rest in God. I am loved. I take comfort in belonging to God. My past does not define me. God won't abandon me. God answers my prayers. God is my healer. God comforts my anxiety. God has great plans for me. I am blessed. I am a child of the King. I am always on God's mind. I am worth more than any materialistic thing. I have everything I need to flourish. I can overcome everything with Christ. I am remarkably made. God wants me to succeed. And then I thought I'd take a moment to hear if there's any other affirmations that you might want to share with the church today one that you've read recently, maybe you've taken it from the lesson study. God is a God of abundance. Any others? Die Heere sê, kies my en jy het die lewe, dis prachtig.
God is always with me. I don't need to be scared at all. Beautiful. I hope that you can take one of these Bible affirmations with you this week and that when you next discover affirmation in God's word, that you'll jot it down in the margin of your Bible or in a journal. That way that when the negativity of the world has, weighs heavy on your mind, you can banish those thoughts with blissful biblical affirmation. I'd like us to close our eyes as we pray. We thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us, seen and unthanked unseen. We thank you for the blessings, both great and small. We live in a world that can feel overwhelming. We find ourselves burdened with a multitude of responsibilities, trials, and challenges. It is easy to become despondent and let negative thoughts take over. Lord, help us to turn to your word and the beautiful messages of love, joy, and hope contained therein. Lord, we pray that you will wrap us in your Holy Spirit, so that the only words that repeat in our minds are yours and not our own. We pray this in your holy name. Amen.